What's up, everybody, and welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video where we cover interesting JavaScript topics in great detail. And in this video, we'll cover arguably the most used and popular array method by the name of map. What makes map so special is the fact that as we're iterating over the original array, essentially we can return whatever we would want, which just means that when it comes to iterating over our data and displaying it in the browser in a nice way, map is a perfect tool for the job. And once we've got a general housekeeping out of the way, now let's focus on the map method. And essentially, we need to understand that always, always map returns a new array, even if it's just an empty array, then it does not change the size of the original array, unlike the filter method. And it always uses the values from the original array when making a new one. However, if you don't want to, and you'll see that in our examples, you don't have to use those values, but you always have access to them. So in my example, I have a general people array. And in that array, I have three objects. I have Bob, Anna, and Susie. And all of them have age as well as position property. So here's what I would want to do. I would want to iterate over my people array and just grab the age. So that's going to be our first example. So how do we need to do that? Well, we first need to create some kind of variable. So we're going to go to const and I'll call this ages and that is equal to a people. Then I'm mapping over and then within the map, we pass in the callback function. Now, this can be good old function with a function keyword. So we can write something like this over here. This can be a arrow function, which is going to be in our case. So that's why we'll right away right here, a arrow function. And also we can set up a reference. So don't worry, once we set up the first example, I'll show you the other two options as well. So here I have my array method. And then if I don't return anything, you'll see that I'll have a new array with three items and the values will be undefined. So first of all, let me show you that that is the case. So I'll go with ages and you'll notice that I have undefined, undefined, undefined. So first, why do I have three items? Because that is my original array. So when map construct that new array, it will always depend on this one, on the original array. So for example, if I add one more item and for example, call this person, I don't know, John, and then say that the age is 26 and he's an intern, you'll see that now I have four undefined. So again, the new array will always depend on the original one. Now, why am I getting undefined back? Well, because I'm not returning anything from the function, from my callback function. And we already know that by default in JavaScript, the function will return undefined. So if I have 200 items, I'm going to have 200 undefined. If I'm going to have three items, four items, then of course, I'll have three or four items. All right, that's a good start. Now, what? well, now I'd want to show you that in the callback function, as a parameter, we can access each and every item, because we need to keep in mind that, of course, we're iterating over this array. Now, since it is a parameter, we can call it whatever we want. So this can be an item, this can be a orange, this can be a person, whatever you'd want. So in this case, probably, it would just make a little bit more sense if I set it up as a person, but I don't have to. Now, in the function body, now I would want to show you that still, yeah, we can access this item, but we can return whatever we would want. So first, I'm going to go with log, and then I'm going to show you that, of course, we're accessing each and every person. Notice, so I have the object. So since the items are objects, then as I'm iterating, I'm accessing that object. But if I would want to, I can just simply return a hello world. And you'll also see that, yeah, I still have my array of four items, but the values are the strings that I'm returning, the hello world. So you can always access this data, but you can return whatever you'd want. And of course, a little bit later, I'll show you a little bit more meaningful example where we display something in the browser. So we'll wrap our data in the HTML. All right, I'm accessing the person. And in this case, I can do multiple things. I can destructure it if I already know how to do that. So I can destructure, for example, 
age or position or name or whatever I'd want, or we can simply return it. So in my case, I'm going to get rid of that console log. And I'm going to say that I'm returning from my callback function, a person. And then since it is a object, I can simply say age. And now you'll see that in the ages, I have 20, 25, 30, and 26. Why do I have those values? Because those represent the values for the property that I'm accessing. And if I would want to make it more interesting, of course, I can massage this data as well, where I can say, yeah, get me the person that age, and then I can multiply this by two. Now, of course, my values right away changed because this is what I'm doing in my callback function. So whatever I'm returning from the callback function will be a value in my new array. Now, before I take a look at a little bit more complicated example where we set up a object, let me just quickly dimension that, of course, since I'm using the arrow function, I could just simply set up a one liner where I'm going to rid of the curly braces here. And then I'll just say that, yeah, I would like to return person and then age multiplied by two. So, of course, that is always an option. Just keep in mind that if you have more functionality, in the function body, you'll still always need to use the curl braces. And let me also show you that you can use the reference. So for example, if I'm going to say get ages, so that is my function. And again, this could be a regular function. And this can be a arrow function. And for example, I'm going to have the same logic, where I'm going to say person that age, I'm returning. And then in here, I'm going to access the person sorry, not age, I'm going to be accessing the person. So if I'll pass in get ages, functionality won't change. So if I'll say get ages, still, I get the same values. So always keep in mind that, of course, you can pass it here directly, or you can set up a function, and then just reference the function. And I can do that with an arrow function, or I can use the good old regular function with a function keyword. And now once we understand the basics, now we can massage the data. Now let's take a look at a little bit more complicated example where essentially I would still want to iterate over data, but I would want to return objects. So instead of just accessing one single value, I'm going to construct the object. How's that going to look like? Well, I'm going to say const new people. And that is going to be equal to a people and then that map. So still the same thing. Again, I'm going to set up my callback function. We already know that I can access each and every item as a parameter. So in this case, just to change it around, I'm going to call this item. And then since I can return whatever I would want from my callback function, I'm going to return a object. And in here, I'm going to say that the object has two properties. So first a name, and that is equal to a person that name, since that is the property, of course, in my item. But of course, since I name it differently, it's not a person anymore. It is now a item. So I'm going to go with item dot name. And then I'm looking for to uppercase, just to showcase that, of course, we can massage our data how we would want. And now, of course, I would want to set up one more property where I'm going to say old age, whatever you would want as a name for the property. And that is going to be equal to a item that age and then plus 20, just to spice things up. And now, of course, if I'm going to go with console log and if I'm going to say new people, new people, you'll see that I have this new array with these objects. So whatever I decided here in my callback function, I'm getting back, which is, of course, very, very cool. And the last thing that I would want to showcase is how we can wrap our data in the HTML. And essentially, that why map is so used, because you can grab your data, you can wrap it in the HTML, or in React's case, in JSX, and you can nicely display the data. So how is that going to look like? Well, I'm just going to iterate over people, and I'm going to grab a name. And once I've got the name in the index HTML, I have the div with an ID of result. So I'm going to select that result. And then I'll place it as a inner HTML, my new array. So let's try that out. So in the app js, I'm going to scroll down and right after the new people, I'm going to go with variable names, and that is going to be equal to my people array. 
So I'm iterating over. I'm using map. In this case, I'll right away just use a one liner where I'm going to say that, yeah, I would like to access the person. But what I would want to return is the heading one. Now I'll wrap this in a template string. So I'm going to say over here that I'm returning instead of a simple string, I'm returning a heading one. So or you're not, let's go with heading two. I think that's going to be a little bit smaller. So I have my heading two, and now I'd want to access that value, the name property. So I'm going to go with person dot name. But instead of simply console logging, which of course we can do, what I would want to do is grab the result. So let's target our result div. And of course, we can do that by using document get element by ID or query selector. So let's go with the result. And that is equal to a document, then query selector. Now I'm looking for my result. So that of course, has the ID of result. So let's go over here result. And now let's set up the inner HTML. So result, and then inner HTML is equal to name. And by the way, you know what, I think I wanted to call this names. So this is going to be equal to a names array. And you'll notice that right now I'm displaying heading twos with these values. Now there's one housekeeping thing that we need to do notice how we're getting these commas. And that is, of course, because we're just returning a whole array. So why don't we collect it together in one giant string? And we can do that by using a join method. And then we'll pass in the empty string. And that just means that our separator will be empty string. And there it is. Now, of course, I can see all my names. And essentially, that's why it is so powerful in the react world and also in the JavaScript applications, vanilla JavaScript applications, because you can take your data and you can massage it however you would want, including wrapping it in the HTML or JSX when it comes to react.